Eli Drinkwitz has finally nabbed a quarterback from the transfer portal, and this move and all the others at the position this offseason shows he's willing to take just about any type of signal caller. Plus, the Missouri softball team not only made the tournament, they are hosting the regionals in softball. So I want to talk about this and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for joining me once again. Thanks for being patient as we are fully in off-season mode at this point. I can't promise you five a week, but you know what? I can promise you a wonderful show today. We got lots to get to. Obviously, we got a lead, though, with the Missouri Tiger quarterback position, as we have so often here during the off-season. Well, it would seem now with the addition of Jack Abraham that we may have finally seen the additions at that position come to a close for Missouri. Of course, this entire offseason, you've heard me championing Brady Cook should be the starter at quarterback this fall, in my opinion. But certainly I don't blame Drinkwitz one bit for looking around the market and seeing if there's a potential upgrade either at the starter or as in the room in general, right? Because, well hate to say it at this point there's no guarantee that Sam Horn is going to make it to campus although if I were a betting man over at betonline of course.net well I would definitely bet that Sam Horn the four-star quarterback from the state of Georgia I think he's going to make it to Mizzou I think he's going to be on campus this fall there's been a lot of talk lately including this space about whether he's going to actually make it to Columbia or not based on his semi-lofty prospects as a major league baseball player, as a pitcher, in fact. But again, I just think he's going to make it to Columbia. But at the same time, it does make sense, especially when there's a bonus here with Jack Abraham. Unlike JT Daniels or Jaden Daniels or even Gary Bohannon, formerly of Baylor, well, Jack Abraham, at least for now, is going to come in as a walk-on player. And that's nice because that gives you some roster flexibility because – Honestly, in a perfect world, you wouldn't want to carry four scholarship quarterbacks. So assuming Horn comes, assuming Tyler Macon and the aforementioned Brady Cook stick around in Columbia for the long term here, at least for the upcoming season, well, it'd be nice to not have to carry four guys on scholarship at quarterback. Having said that, I think it's pretty obvious that if Jack Abraham were to come in this fall, win the job and and take the day, well, pretty clearly... At some point, there's going to be a scholarship available with all the portal ins and outs going on. He'll be put on scholarship at some point, no doubt about that. But you know what? What kind of player is Missouri getting with Jack Abraham? Because you do have to question, well, if this guy is willing to come in as a walk-on, perhaps he wasn't as well thought of as maybe you would like. Well, Here's a guy who's had a really long and winding road in his career to steal a classic Beatles song, to say the least, a guy who's now going to be entering his seventh season of college football here in 2022. He was knocked out of the 2020 campaign early with a concussion. And in 2021, well, those those symptoms lingered, as they often can for a really long time. And unfortunately, Mr. Abraham was not able to be cleared for the 2021 season. But the NCAA granted him a waiver. This is after having redshirted his freshman year, after having get, getting a free COVID-19 season. So Jack Abraham, certainly one of the longest tenured players in the history of college football. He'll be suiting up for Missouri next season. But again, a guy who played for Southern Miss for three seasons, a guy who was going to suit up or at least expected to possibly even start for Mississippi State for Mike Leach in the SEC recently. Well, that's pretty impressive. He was also considering Ole Miss, Maryland, and Austin P. Hey, one of those things is not quite like the other. 
including Missouri this time around. Now, when it comes to Ole Miss, obviously that's maybe the more interesting comparison here, another SEC team. But it seems like, according to Jack Abraham, he felt like he had a better chance to actually start at Missouri than he would at Ole Miss. Now, again, I don't think Missouri is handing Jack Abraham this job by any stretch of the imagination before he even takes a snap in practice. But if you actually look at the Ole Miss quarterback depth chart, I'd say it does probably make more sense for – I would probably do the same thing if I were Jack Abraham is what I'm trying to say, just removing my Missouri fandom and being as objective as I can in a hypothetical scenario. You've still got the Altmeyer kid who – excuse me for not writing down his first name, but I do remember watching him play against Baylor, their bowl game this past season, when, of course, Matt Corral famously left that game with an ankle injury. Not the best – circumstances. Hey, Luke Altmeyer, there we go. Don't even have to clean it up in post now. But I don't think you can completely discount that kid, the kid who was, you know, one of the most highly rated players for Ole Miss to come out of that state at quarterback for a long time. But also Jackson Dart is there as well, a kid that Lane Kiffin got in the transfer portal from from Southern Cal. He's sort of your presumptive starter, I think, according to most people. So some pretty good competition down in Rebel country. So I can see why Jack Abraham would have opted to come to Columbia instead. So those are my initial broader takes on Jack Abraham. I think he's definitely a good depth piece, a solid guy to bring in to the locker room. Not a definite starter, though, by any stretch of the imagination, but more specifically, what type of player do we think Missouri is getting in Jack Abraham, in his own words, and also his statistical profile as well? Let's talk about that, but first, I want to tell you about Built Bar, which, quite frankly, has got to be scientifically proven at this point to be the greatest tasting protein bar of all time. Well, I want you to imagine dipping your finger into a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. Mm, that's pretty decadent, right? Well, then open your eyes and realize that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein as well. That's going to satisfy your hunger. Well, this is what I like to eat. Yes, a birthday cake puff from Built Bar. Fantastic stuff, as always. These babies, including the original varieties, they're always low-cal, low-sugar, low-carb, but high in protein as well. All puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. So you know what? Go to Built.com to get the birthday cake puffs right now. Once again, Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. Now make sure to check out Locked On NBA Big Board host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA draft, mock draft, player rankings, and of course, Big Boards. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now, when talking to PowerMizzou.com recently, Jack Abraham admitted that he's not the biggest guy in the world and doesn't have the strongest arm in the world, nor is he necessarily the fastest guy in the world either. But he thinks he can move around a little bit, at least by some time within the pocket, right? But, of course, if you look at him statistically, the numbers do bear out that he's not much of a rushing threat. In fact, negative 78 yards rushing his first year, 77 the next year, 26 the next year. So in some ways, he did a decent job avoiding the sack after his first year as a signal caller at Southern Miss anyway. And also an 11, the 11th best completion percentage in the country, his last real full season as a starter all the way back in 2019 at this point. So obviously, hey, 11th best in the country in terms of completion percentage. Well, that definitely jumps off the page, right? That's an impressive statistic, without a doubt. But, and this is a big but, folks, I think completion percentage 
can be one of the most overrated statistics in all of football. Now, don't get me wrong. You look, you go back to 2019. Well, who led the nation in completion percentage that year? Well, it was no, not, none other than Joe Burrow at 76%. And holy cow, is it absolutely bonkers to go back and look at his statistics again. 60 touchdowns and six picks and 5,600 yards in a college football season. That is astonishing. But anyway, that wasn't really the point. The point in bringing up Burrow was to say that, obviously, you want to complete as high of a percentage of your passes as possible, right? But on the other hand, if you're completing those passes for a relatively low completion percentage, or excuse me, a relatively low yards per attempt and yards per completion, well, now we got to put everything in context a little bit. And on top of that, well, hey, you look at Jack Abraham, there's some impressive guys that he was ahead of on that completion percentage ranking. In fact, he's right ahead of Justin Fields, who is a first-round pick now with the Chicago Bears. And, of course, Justin Herbert, another giant name, the two Justins. Well, Justin Herbert, now considered one of the superstars of the National Football League. But here's the rub. Justin Herbert had 32 touchdowns and six picks. Now that's the that's an important ratio right there. I think we can all agree. Justin Fields, 41 touchdowns and three interceptions. Whereas Jack Abraham, on the other hand, 19 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. So that is actually tied for the most interceptions in Conference USA from, from that period. And I'll be honest, that's a concerning amount, not just for 2019, but his whole career, just a, a bit of a concerning amount of giveaways, in my opinion, especially for a guy who, by his own admission, doesn't really attempt to push the ball down the field a tremendous amount and isn't a huge threat to run the ball either. So to me, while, again, his percentages on paper seem impressive, you do have to adjust for competition. You do have to adjust for the type of offense that's being run there. Again, the fact that Jack Abraham was recruited to play for Mike Leach in Starkville, Mississippi State, he never ended up getting there, obviously. Well, he got there physically, never actually took a snap for the Bulldogs. Well, that's an indication of a couple things. Number one, Mike Leach knows quarterbacks. So obviously this Abraham kid can play a little bit. On the other hand, it's also one of the easiest systems for a quarterback to put up numbers, right? So it's also not a, a necessarily an indication that, wow, this guy's a definite starter. He's a definite sure thing. So to me, just still a lot more questions than answers with Jack Abraham at this point. I will say I admire that the guy is willing to bet on himself and say, hey, I, I do not necessarily need a, a, a scholarship. I'll walk on and see if I can test my medal in the SEC as I, as I wanted to do a couple seasons ago and never got that opportunity. So just from a personal perspective, I wish the guy luck uh, at first glance without taking a deep dive into his film, though. That amount of interceptions, that amount of giveaways, that, that's a really, really concerning statistic to me. But, you know, just his profile, it shows he's a six-footer, right? Six feet, about 205 pounds. You know, he's not the same, not the same type of player as Jaden Daniels by any means. Jaden Daniels, the former Arizona State quarterback who ended up at LSU during the transfer process. Well, he's more of like a Brad Smith type in a way, much more of an electric open field runner with, with some arm talent too, don't get me wrong, but much more of a run first type of guy, certainly than, than JT Daniels of Georgia and Jack Abraham too. And also Abraham being a much shorter statured player than JT Daniels. It does just really goes to show you, I'm not really sure what Eli Drinkwitz template is for a quarterback. I'm not exactly sure what the number one or two or three thing he looks for at that position is, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I definitely like, I like the, the ability to say, Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll mold the offense after my best player, my most important player and, and all the other guys, that's all well and good. But a part of me does think, Hey, at a certain point, shouldn't there be certain traits that you're looking for in a quarterback? And I, I'd just be curious to know what Eli does look for in that position.
And coming up, let's talk some Missouri basketball. An important player is officially returning next season. A bunch of guys who entered the transfer portal still looking for jobs. And of course, softball, the number 15 seed in the NCAA tournament. They're going to be playing in Columbia on Friday. Let's talk about some softball a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online, where, yes, darn it, I did say that I thought the Phoenix Suns were a decent bet to win the NBA championship at the beginning of this. And wouldn't you know it, Chris Paul let me down again. Oh, well, no big deal. What are you going to do? I also said that Dallas, though, was probably the one long shot. So, eh, you, you win some, you lose some, I suppose. But you know what? Our partners at Bet Online, whether you're into the NBA or it's baseball, whatever it might, it might be, they're your number one source. There's no question about that. Again, they've got soccer, fighting, even next year's NFL futures, game by game bets. It's all there. Bet online. Again, your continued number one spot for all your sports wagering info, live betting, playoffs, esports, the whole deal. You got to check it all out at betonline.net, where the game starts. And in probably the least surprising news of the Missouri offseason, Kobe Brown is officially coming back next season. He announced this on his Instagram page, interestingly enough, and I say that because, well, we never got any indication that Kobe was in the transfer portal or was even considering entering the portal. So, and obviously if Caleb Brown had entered the portal, maybe we would have thought, "Uh uh-oh, maybe Kobe is following him out the door, but When that didn't happen, I think we all kind of knew that Kobe Brown was going to be back, right? Obviously, we want that to happen. Kobe, an an important part of this program for the past three seasons. Happy to see that he's going to spend his senior year in Columbia, without a doubt. But you know what? When you look at the rest of the Missouri roster, obviously a ton of guys have head out the door. But so far, only Trevin Brazil has wound up in what I would say is an equivalent or better position. Certainly, I'm not arguing, yeah, Arkansas is a better spot than Missouri right now. Got it, Arkansas fans. No problem admitting that. I'm mostly talking about the other spots. For instance, Anton Brookshire ended up with Rick Pitino in Iona in upstate New York, right? Then you've got Dejuan Gordon ended up in New Mexico State, Amari Davis Wright State, et cetera, et cetera. And there are also three guys, including Boogie Coleman, Sean Duru Gordon, and Yaya Keita, who are still available. They still still are undecided on where they're going to be playing their college basketball next season. Now, one note really quick, just because those guys have not decided where they're going yet, well, since they've entered the portal before the May 1st deadline, well, they'll still be eligible to play for this coming season. Now, there is one exception to that. There are guys who, if you're a graduate transfer, if you're eligible to be a graduate transfer player, you've already received your degree and you're going to take the free extra year, as it were, well, you actually can still do that post May 1st. So specifically, that situation, well, there can still be a little bit more movement here post that May 1 deadline in basketball and football, at least the very, very... The guys who've already gotten their degrees, who are very much veteran players, sort of like Jack Abraham, right? A little bit. So that could still happen. Just wanted to make that note clear really quick. But again, Kobe Brown coming back. Also, Dennis Gates has seemingly finalized his staff here. Interestingly, former Florida golf coach, head coach, Michael Fly, a part of the staff as a statistical analyst and and various other jobs he has. Dennis Gates says he'll, he believes that Fly will be a head coach again someday, so probably a short-term addition here, but a nice one, I would say, for early on for Dennis Gates to get as much experience and, and knowledge in that room with him as possible. I do have to mention that when you consider that, again, only Trevin Brazil of the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missouri Tiger basketball players from last season's roster that have entered the transfer portal. Only one has really upgraded his position. The rest have had to step down a level in terms of competition. It does have to make you wonder, other than Javon Pickett going to SLU, that's another another argument to be made there. 
but you do have to wonder how many of those guys these guys left voluntarily and if that's that's the case i realize that okay this is modern college basketball right what the heck you know you got you win some you lose some if you're going to be if you're if guys are going to be it's been a while now i guess i should say where it seems like guys at the end of the roster when teams need a scholarship well magically they seem to get that scholarship so it's easy to sort of look at that from the player's perspective and go well gee is it really that bad if they're able to leave after one year and from that perspective i can't i can't disagree with that whatsoever because especially in a world where in Dennis Gates' opening press conference, his, his opening statements as the new Missouri Tiger basketball coach, well, I'm paraphrasing here, but something he said that stuck with me for a little bit is that, well, you guys, well, I didn't, I didn't recruit you originally, or you didn't choose me, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to recruit you now, or I'm choosing you now, or something like that. Basically, some fluffy language quote that made us all feel really good. The guys who are currently on the roster last season was like, hey, we're all in this together, except, oh, wait, nine of you are going to be heading out the door. Now, a couple of those guys did so voluntarily. I think Javon Pickett was like, hey, I don't really want to start over with a new coach at Missouri. I'll try to move on, go somewhere else, get a little bit closer to home. Trevin Brazil obviously had financial incentives to go on to, to uh, Arkansas, let's put it that way. But everybody else, I don't know, just that statement of, hey, hey, I choose you guys, or whatever Dennis Gates said in that opening press conference, that was basically, regardless of the actual quote, that was the spirit of his remarks there. Boy, that lands a little, little, uh, little, little hollow, doesn't it? It rings just a bit hollow in retrospect. Don't get me wrong, I like Dennis Gates, but if you find – college basketball to be a little odious at this point well there's another good reason for you is when you go into some kid's house you talk to their mom and dad during the recruiting process and you say hey it's gonna be awesome come to missouri i'll watch your kid but oh wait if they don't shoot as good a three-point percentage as i like well then i'm gonna ask them to move on to right state for instance I don't know. Is that really what college basketball is all about? Is that is that what the fans are into? I guess win at all costs, right? That's ultimately what the fans are into. But this continued transition here in college basketball, I continue to be curious as to where this ends, without a doubt. But finally, you know what? I do have to talk a little softball here. Speaking of a sport that I think is actually on the way up. Now, in terms of overall popularity, clearly – Women's college softball is not going to catch March Madness anytime soon, but I'll tell you that tournament, that postseason tournament with the the continued expansion of coverage that ESPN has given that sport over the last few seasons, you can really start to feel the momentum come on for softball in general. And it really is, it's an enjoyable sport, especially to watch not only on TV, but in person, in my opinion, it's going to be a first pitch one o'clock on friday all of you who can make it out to the missouri softball stadium just off stadium drive there here in columbia i encourage you to do so i i did i went to a game this season had a blast honestly it's a really intimate fun stadium and experience even if you're sitting in the outfield grass by the way on on your own tailgating chairs heck you're you're basically 200 feet deep right that's like sitting in in shallow center field in the middle in the middle of 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 Bush Stadium, right? You're basically sitting right in front of whoever the the St. Louis center fielder is, Tyler O'Neill, right? Isn't that who it is? I don't know what position he plays. Who cares? The point is, Missouri softball a lot of fun to watch. These ladies actually, you get hot with a pitcher, right time. Heck, they have an outside shot to make a deep run. Possibly, you know, even even more outside shot of winning the whole thing. So hopefully it'll be a fun run for your Tigers. They came really close to winning the SEC tournament, showing that, hey, anything's possible because the SEC is the cream of the crop in softball. So you know what? Tiger softball players going to be watching on Friday and for however long you ma manage to last in the tournament. So good luck, ladies. But with all that being said, thanks for joining me. As always, on Locked On Mizzou and making it your first listen. Now make your second listen Locked On SEC. Get all your daily SEC news in less than 30 
minutes with our expert, Chris Gordy. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.